everybody, it's Lisa Marie here. Hi, my sweet lifers. Hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Father Andrew and I are hanging out again today, doing another Sweet Life in Christ, starting a new series actually on the saints, which I think will be really interesting because we don't really talk a lot about those saints, and I think it would be a really informative yeah. series to be doing. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, I want to, if I were to ask you to think of a famous saint or just think of a saint, who would be the first saint you would name? The only one I would think about, well, two. Uh, St. Francis. St. Francis, yeah. And Mother well. Teresa. Mother Teresa, okay, well. Yeah. Yeah, so saints that we know a lot about. Um, and, I, I, you know, but if you ask most of our congregation, you know, it's St. Francis, yes, because we have a big St. Francis Day. Um, but also you, you'd throw out a lot of St. Paul, St. Peter, well, St. Yeah, John, Peter those people who wrote. Yeah. And, you know, every time I do this, I ask, well, who are some saints? And it's always these people from that walked with Christ or wrote by Bible books. And, and so we get this idea that a saint is someone who lived long ago, who we can never attain to that level of, 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 um, of, of holiness. Like right. someone so immensely holy that right. we can't even attain that. Right. Or someone who lived a life so great that, well, we can't even get there. But that's not exactly what a saint is. I mean, yes, they're, they're all holy people, right? But they're not, so holy that we can't say most of the saints in the Jesus's time, those like even St. Paul, he had flaws. St. Peter had lots of flaws. They're yeah. humans. At the very beginning, they're humans. But we get this idea that saints, you know, are these older people. But as you said, there's Mother Teresa, who is a saint, who is a saint. We don't say St. Teresa. Right. We still refer to her as Mother, but she is a saint. And she lived, she died in the late 90s. Uh, we have saints who lived in the 2000s. We have saints who just, who lived in this century, um, who just, we have one in the Catholic Church we were talking about before, who just is about to be canonized, right. and, and he died pretty recently. Yeah. Um, saint, saints aren't this obstruct person who, you know, uh, who, who, you know, we can't attain to. Saints are people that we strive to be. Right. And we can be. And that's why we celebrate saints. So if you ever, you know, people always ask, why do we celebrate saints? It's, why do we, why do we, why do we ask saints to pray for us? All this stuff. It's, is it, we don't worship saints. No, we don't. We don't worship saints. We don't, we don't do that. We, we honor them because we want to live like them. Right. Because we want to take it, um, they take experience, their experience and try to apply it to our lives. And I feel like they have attained in terms of our only, only our humanity perspective. Yeah. Because we don't have, obviously, we don't have God's perspective and we don't walk in his ways and have his thoughts. But mm -hmm. in our very finite ability to understand what it means to biblically be holy mm -hmm. and to be righteous, they have gotten to a point where we are amazed yeah. at what they've accomplished yeah. with the lives that they've been Exactly. Carrying. And really, they the, the stuff they did wasn't that far fresh of something, stuff we can do. What I mean, the, the key hallmark of saints living is loving God. When they, they, they live their lives to serve God, we can do that by going to church, by praying, by by worshiping Him, by reading our scripture on a daily basis or however we want to do that, and loving our neighbors, loving each other. And on most of the saints, they attain saint, their sainthoods because of their service to others mm -hmm. in the name of God. Mm -hmm. And we can do that. It's, you know, yes, there's some who had miracles that, that maybe it's going to be hard for us to like, right. like St. Catherine of Siena, who had the miracle of the stigmata, um, which is that she had the marks of the nails appear in her hands. You know, a lot of people, that that's just something that's not going to happen to us. Let's be honest. But other stuff she did was stuff we can do. Mm -hmm. Speaking truth to power and when it's sometimes uncomfortable. She, she told sometimes the Pope, this is how you should act. Stop this. <laughs> That that takes a lot of a lot of courage, mm -hmm. but she did it, and we can speak speak out against um, you know speak truths, right? And so a lot of our saints, that's what they did. They they just lived lives to serve God and to serve one another. Saint Francis, you know, we know him as the pet, the pet guy, and I love the Saint the uh, pet blessings we do on Saint Francis Day. But we don't realize Saint Francis did a lot more, served a lot more than the animals. He was a ad, Adherent uh, defender of the poor. He he worked tirelessly for the poor. He spent. He went out in the street corners and preached. That's all he did. And and we sometimes forget those little aspects. Yeah. Um, 
And, and when we look at saints' lives, we can take some of those experiences that made them saints and become saints ourselves and, and apply them to our lives. And where we do it, because that is the goal of all of God's children is to live like saints and yeah. to be saints when we move on to the next world. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing I've learned in seminary is that as image makers, we are supposed to be daily absolutely trying our very best to live in, in the way that Jesus did. Yes. And that is not, you know, turning away from people who are sinners. That's exactly. coming to sinners and saying, hey, yeah. here here I am. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I can help you. And yeah. And that's becoming a saint in, yeah. in a very, I mean, it sounds, yeah. uh, it sounds a wool, but it's not a wool. It's yeah. really simple stuff. It is. Yeah. And that's, uh, there's a church that, um, uh, that's, that's a Lutheran church that is called saints, the church of saints and sinners. And that's what we mean, because we're, we're, we're all saints and we're all sinners. We are. We, and we, there's, there's, you know, even the saints, we're sinners. There's no getting around it. There's no getting around it because we're human. But when we acknowledge that there's that, that we're we're sinners and we acknowledge the sin around us and still love, we can live as saints. And you know, I, I love the song, the 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 uh, hymn, and it's very English. It's a very English hymn, but it's called um, "I Sing a Song of the Saints of God," and it talks about part of it is about how there's saints living among us, and we will can be that too. Like one of the ones, you know, and, and one was a doctor, and one was a queen, which is English. <laughs> Yeah. One was a shepherdess on the green. All of them were saints of God, and I mean to be one too, God willing. And I, you know, and another line was, "You can meet them in school or in the lanes or at sea in church or in trains or in shops or at tea." Again, it's an English song, uh, and it sounds like Dr. Seuss. It does, but it's, it's so wonderful to think about that. It's attainable. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there are saints living among us, and when we can recognize that and see we can see how we're also living as saints. And that's really the purpose of honoring saints is so we can attain our own sainthood and and be saints, to be saint-like, yeah. live like saints. I know, that's what I've been trying and to do. And again, all it takes, <laughs> it doesn't take a whole, you know, you know so, oh yes, there's some saints, St. Catherine of Siena, again, she spent, you know, she did a lot of fasting, a lot of fasting. She ravished her body. A lot of us can't do, you know, no. I, I don't like missing a meal. When I fast, it's... <laughs> It's, uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. I like to eat. I, as you can tell, I'm an eater. Um, but it's not about just about that. It's about, right. again, can we love God? Yes. Check. Can we love one another? Check. We're living like saints. And when we go out and serve God and serve others, human, others we are living like saints. And we are, and then maybe, who knows, maybe someday people write about us and look at our lives after we're gone and say, that's how I live. And that's really the purpose of Christian life. That's what we're called to do, to live lives that make others see Christ in our actions. Again, that's all saints work. And this is just something that popped in my mind, and I, could, I don't know if it was the Holy Spirit inspired, it probably is, is that part of the suffering is dealing with in our own inner, inner mm -hmm. selves the struggle of that. Like, do I go and do something uncomfortable that's it's yes. going to make that, me suffer? And yes. Should I do that? Well, I'm doing it for Christ. Yeah. And that's a perfect, yeah, the suffering, all saints suffer something. You know, some have lost their lives. We'll talk about a couple later on in subsequent videos, a few who lost their lives because of their work. Some have lost their health. Like, you know, some of our saints, that their their health took a major hit because of their living like God. Some have lost relationships. They've lost their families. They lost their friends. Some have lost status. You know, they some have given up riches <laughs> because they're, they're d devoting themselves to God. So, yes, there is loss in living a saint. There's loss in the gospel. Yeah. Christ said it himself. Yeah. He told the rich man, Sell, how, how do I follow? How do I become a follower? How do I become a disciple? Sell everything you have, give it away, and follow me. Right. Because when we're burdened by the world, we can't truly follow. But when we when we are suffering, <laughs> when we suffer on the, because of the world, we can focus more on God. And so there's suffering, and yes, our when we we most likely probably are not going to be uh, killed for our re release, hopefully. We hope not. Yeah, although there are some saints we'll talk about that pretty recently who were killed, uh, but we hopefully won't. But there is something that we give up to live Christ-like. Well, we die in into Him. We die, die into yeah. Him. And and I think that one of the main things that happens um, with sainthood in terms of our interpretation of mm -hmm. designation of that yeah. 
is that these people have died, really died, yeah. into them into, yeah. into Christ. They have said, "I'm not going to be of this world." Yeah. To the utmost extent, yeah. it's not like I just went to church on Sunday and I didn't yeah. watch the baseball game. Yeah. It's, yeah, they seriously yeah. died. They, they died. They daily. gave up a lot, and yeah, and they may have lived a long, happy life and died peacefully at home, but they still died in Christ right. at, at, throughout their lives and yeah. gave up a lot. So, yeah, there, there is, there is a a sense of we have to give up something. To live by Christ, we have to give up comforts. We have to give up the expectations of the world. We have to give up this idolized version that we made for ourselves, and and just submit all to Christ. Right. And that's how. It, and and when we unburden ourselves with that, we're more free to see the good in humanity and, and to be in the world and to give to the world. And the other thing I will say is that when you begin to do that process, you begin to see more wickedness in the world. Yes. Yeah. And it's exasperated what Satan has done yeah. in this, yeah. this space. Some of the saints will talk about they a lot of the reasons they became saints because they saw evil in the world and they spoke out against it, and many of which lost their lives because, yeah. because they spoke out against wrongs. Some didn't, some, but they did. You know, Some have lost some status in the church, yeah. some status in their organizations. Uh, but a lot of them, they but they still boldly spoke truth to power, spoke uh, out against what they're seeing as unjust, mm -hmm. as evil, and saying this is not right. This is right. not how God intended. This is not how Jesus intended. And I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stand against it. I'm going to keep fighting it. And it led to their lives. And in that situation, they, we you know that that they boldly, <laughs> you know, yes, there are probably some interpretations and you know hopefully they weren't thinking i'm gonna lose my life for it or saying but they did say if it came to that yeah then i'm still gonna and that's the reason it. why we put them in that status exactly because they were willing to do they were stepping out in harm's way yeah. and outside their comfort zone like we'll talk about jonathan daniels and you know he went across the country outside of his comfort zone into a culture he had no idea about and stood against an injustice as he saw and knew that this work was probably, it was very dangerous, but he did it anyway. And that's, you know, that's what we're called to do. Go out into the world proclaiming the goodness of God, and that's going to lead us into some uncomfortable situations. But we still, and it could lead us into, you know, into, you know, um, for instance, going into, you know, a lot of saints gone into slums. And they weren't, you know, they, they weren't risking their lives, but there was an uncomfort there. And some of the places they're going was uncomfortable, and it's very uncomfortable going to you know where there's poverty, where there's where there's just such hopelessness. That's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But people they still went into those situations with the glory of God and to and to, to work for justice, to work for uh, peace, to work for to work for the spread of the kingdom of God in an unjust world. And they, you know, and, and they still went there and did yeah. that work and put put aside their securities, put aside their their comforts to go and do this work. And that, you know, that's what we're called to do: is to step outside of our comfort zone, step outside of the walls of the church, yeah. and go into the world and yeah. preach the good news. Yeah. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the strength to be able yeah. to do that. It's, again, it's, yeah. the song. I mean, again, it's. Uh, they were all they were all of them saints of God, and I mean God helping to be one too. When we say in our baptismal covenant with God's help or God willing, it's God's help that helps us do that. So we're not alone when we yeah. go into these yeah. situations. We're not alone when we go out in the world. We have God and then the multitude of saints. Well, and the God. other thing I'll say, and this may be a good a good closer for this episode, is that when you're called to be <clears throat> God's when you're called to be gods and you know you're called to be yeah. gods, there's a level of being called, right? And some people get called and they go to church and that's cool. But there's a lot of people who get called and they get called in a way that makes it feel like there's no other way but to do the end then and then the yeah. end then and then yeah. the end then. And in the end thening of it of their lives, they touch more people's lives yeah. and really help the world be a better place. Yeah. And that's really what sainthood yep, is. Absolutely. It's just really doing that um, in a way that is not only inwardly pleasing to God, but also outwardly pleasing to the absolutely. world. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. anyway. Well, I hope you guys have got some value in this. I know I sure have, and I'm looking forward to this series. So, if you did, 
Do us a favor, like and share. Don't forget to ring that bell. And we'll see you next time on Another Sweet Life in Christ. Take care. Bye.